Hey students, uh, we're going to go through the progress check uh, for the for loops and discuss the answers. All right, so for question one, we're going to omit that. Uh, on my oversight, I did not see that this contained uh, a nested loop. So uh, everybody's going to get that one for free. This assignment is going to be graded out of five points instead of out of six. Uh, so uh, don't worry about number one. We'll talk about it when we get to uh, nested loops. But for the second question is where we're actually going to start our work. So uh, we have method one, which the loop counter is con uh, is from I equals zero uh, up to I equals A divided by B. So remember for integer division, you're going to um, run, uh, you're going to uh, just ignore the decimal part. And then for loop uh, method two, uh, the loop is controlled by uh, I starts at zero and you increment I by whatever B is. And there are a couple of ways to think about this. The only, so reasonably A divided by B and incrementing by B up until you get to A are both versions of dividing by A. So the only time they're going to give you the same count is when A remainder B is equal to zero. Because and that's true because I the important part is that I starts at zero for both of these loops. And so A divided by B is going to be if A remainder to be equal zero, then you just in this case, I is going to equal the uh, quotient of whatever A divided by B is if the remainder is zero. And then since. Uh, for the method two loop, since I starts at a zero and you increment I by B and the loop runs until I is equal to A, you're also counting really the number of times that B divides into A. Now, if it helps you, I just go through and list some numbers that make that blow up the other options that don't work. So, for instance, if you use uh, when A and B are both even, you can use A equals six and B equals four then if a is six and b is four this first loop is going to run uh for i is less than one so the loop is going to run once and so loop count is going to be one the second loop is going to run twice because i starts out at zero so it's going to run for i equals zero and i equals uh four so that loop is going to run twice uh for b it's the same thing when uh but just a and b are uh both i so if a is five and b is three then five divided by three in terms of ints is going to be one so the loop is going to run from i equals zero to one and so it's only going to run for i equals zero now if you use i equals i mean a equals five and b equals three then the loop is going to run for i equals zero you increment by b so it's going to run for i equals three and then it's going to stop when i equals six so the loop is going to run twice in that case when a is even and b is odd what's going to happen well one thing that could happen is uh let's hold on so we had a is eight and b is three so if A is 8 and B is 3, then 8 divided by 3 is 2. So the loop is going to run for I equals 0. It's going to run for I equals 1. So it's going to run twice. The bottom loop for method 2 is going to be while I is less than 8 and I starts at a 0, so it increments by 3. So I is going to be 0, I is going to be 3, I is going to be 6. So the loop runs three times. So... C doesn't work as well. And then um, it, the option where A remain to B equals zero is you can choose any two values that make that work. Say A is eight and B is two. Then the method two loop is going to start at I equals zero and it's going to run for I equals zero, I equals two, I equals four and I equals six. Because now you're looking at really how many times can you subdivide eight by B, it, uh, which is two, and that's going to be four times. And up here, we're going to run uh, for I 
less than eight divided by it was two, which still is four. So that loop is also going to run four times. So the answer is when uh, a remainder B is equal to zero. And again, uh, the shorter way to do that is since I starts at zero and you increment by B and you stop when I is A, you are basically just dividing B into A anyway. And that's going to be the exact same thing as that first uh, for loop. For number three, um, the key part here is that the increment step is that you are skipping by two and that loop starts out at one. And you have the precondition that tells you that num is going to be greater than zero. So the smallest that num can be as an int is one. So uh, this is just a sum loop where we start out with some variable equal to zero and we increment it by uh, the loop counter. So in this case, uh, it's going to start out at one and just skip by two every time. So this is going to sum the odd integers between one and num inclusive. And the reason it is inclusive is because the less than or equal to is in, uh, inside that loop. For number four, uh, the loop starts out at one, it goes up to 100. And if k remainder four is equal to zero, you're going to print that value of k. So what this is actually printing is the multiples of four from one to 100. So it's going to print four, eight, 12, and so forth. And so now we just need to find a loop that's going to do though the exact same thing. So for 4a, the loop starts out at one, goes up to 25, and it prints k. It, uh, it prints k. So this is just going to print one through 25 inclusive. So a doesn't work. B is going to print, um, it's going to start out at k equals one and skip by four. So it's going to print one, five, nine, and so forth. B doesn't work. C is going to print the remainder of K when divided by four. So if K starts out at one, it's going to do one remainder four, which is one, two remainder four, which is uh, two, three remainder four, which is three, four remainder four, which is zero, five remainder four, which is one. And it just repeats every four times. So C doesn't work. Um, D is going to print the powers of four because you're going to start out at four, print four, multiply by four. So you're going to get 16. Uh, it actually is only going to print uh, four and 16 because uh, 64 won't be uh, less than 25. So it's only going to print four and 16. So D doesn't work. And so by just process of elimination, we get to E, but E starts out at K equals four. So it's going to print four and then add four to K and keep doing that until you get to 100. And so it's also going to print the multiples of four, which is going to be four, eight, and 12. So E is correct. For number five, uh, I just took the options from the other page and wrote them here. So we have this method, uh, it's called print sum, and it takes in two parameters. Uh, it has num one and num two. Num one is the stopping value for the loop, and num two is uh, one part of the condition to print. So for A, if we call print sum zero to 20, I is going to be from zero to uh, 19. So we're uh, searching from one to 19, and the only time we're going to print I is when I remainder 20 is equal to zero and I remainder two is equal to zero. So we're looking for, uh, so I is only going to print if, so uh, we're only going to print if I is even and I is a multiple of 20. So there are no um, even multiples of 20 between zero and uh, 19 other than uh, zero. So that won't print zero 10. For B, you're looking for multiples of 10 that are even from zero to nine. And again, that's only zero because the only multiples of 10 between uh, zero and uh, nine are, is just uh, zero. Um, for 
uh, C, this is multiples of five and even, which is not even possible from zero to four uh, other than zero. So again, you won't get um, 10. For D, I is going to go from zero to 19 and you're looking for multiples of five that are even, the multiples of five that are between zero and 19 are zero, five, 10 and 15. So zero and 10 are going to print. And that's exactly what we want. E doesn't work because you're going to get um, zero, five. So you're going to get zero, uh, f uh, 10 and 20 because 20 is going to be between I uh, zero and 24. So that would uh, E would print zero, 10 and 20. So it's more than what we want. And last for number six is we have this method that seemingly prints uh, the string backwards. The trick here is that uh, in the case of str being apple, str.length is going to be four. So str.length is four. I'm sorry, str.length is five. But this entire value, I'm sorry, turns into a four. So I starts out at four and goes until it's greater than zero. So, uh, well, until it's uh, zero. So the first time you go through the loop, you're going to print substring value uh, I minus one. So you're going to go from three to four. So in the case of Apple, you have A, P, P, L, E. So we have index of zero, one, two, three, and four. And remember, dot substring three four means just print the l so the first thing that we're going to print is l and then we're going to uh decrement i by one and so i is going to now be um three but then inside the loop you're going to have three minus one which is two so you're going to print substring value two three which is just printing the p and so you're going to get all of the letters except for the e so d is correct all right, so that is this video on uh, for loops. Hopefully it was helpful.